shots party, I think it was uh, like the next time I saw your show or something. Well, you would know. I'll probably come movies. She hasn't got a show. <laughs> You'll see. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Merv, what's your involvement with Debbie Turner and Miss America? Well, if Donald Trump and I have done anything worthwhile in life, and there are some doubters out there, we did pick Debbie Turner as Miss America. And it was interesting how it happened because we see something as the judges, and Debbie Allen was there, Mike Schmidt, great baseball player, and uh, Felicia Richard, Debbie's sister. We see something the public never sees, and I don't know how they ever could, but it's a shame they don't. We see a 15-minute tape on each of the girls, the 10 finalists, with the toughest questions the kind CNN asks when they get a politician up there. What did you do there? They really ask her stuff she's not expecting, and after seeing the private tape of Debbie, we all, you could just feel it in the room, said, oh my God, there's Miss America. She is really an extraordinary young woman. None of those slick, you know, oh, I want to I wanna work for charities the rest of my, none. She just laid it right out, and they bombed her. Now, this is her first trip to L.A., do you know? If I don't know if it's her first trip or not, but we thought she has six months to go. We thought it would be fun for her to get in and see the whole community. That's been a great star turnout for her. You know, you're in the entertainment business, and like you mentioned, a lot of the contestants always aspire to be TV journalists. Yeah. You know, they aspire to be actresses. And I was reading in the LA Times uh, last week that they're having a tough time getting movie roles and getting parts on television, the former Miss America winners and Miss USA's and Miss Teen. Why do you think that is? Well, I suppose there is a kind of stigma. If you look, it's, this is going to be the 72nd year of the pageant. I mean, how many do we have held their celebrity beyond that great night and maybe the year after where they tour America and, and, and the rest of the world? How many hold on to their celebrity? It's either uh, a job that they get in front of the camera on television or a scandal that keeps them in the limelight. But uh, it's strange. There must be some stigma on it, like, oh, they're, they're okay, but... You know, they, uh, they probably won't last beyond that year. A few have. Do you think you'll be a judge in September? Have they already decided, you know, who's going to judge it? They want me two years in a row? No. <laughs> no. The other cute thing is, you know, I have a hotel and casino in Atlantic City. And whoever wins the contest, if she happens, because the girls are a lot, in a lot of different, staying in a lot of different hotels. If the girl wins from your hotel, you get to throw the party for the next year. We've had three winning girls in a row. So every year, we at resorts get to have that party. And last year, because I was a judge, they put a blindfold on me and took me out of the room so I couldn't see the contestants. And then Ava, Ava Gabor, they, that's a week before the, the pageant. Then Ava Gabor had to MC the evening, which she loved. She liked it, especially when they put me in handcuffs and destroyed me. <laughs> Thank you, Bella, and it's lovely to see you. I enjoy you so much on CNN. Feelings mutual. Thank you. It's a very nice Good. party. We'll get Do you validate party. parking? Uh, you which, own the hotel, don't you? Know, yes, but which garage? It's right out here. They said Merv Griffin had to validate it. It's like a buck fifty. I mean, the man owns the hotel. I mean, he owns the whole hotel. 
Party. Just tell Merv. Is it right in front of Trader Vicks? Yeah. Just say Merv's coming out the door right now. If you give me a problem. All right. Uh, well, All you, right. You, you, you throw the first punch. Do you is know Byron Allen? Bella Shaw from CNN News. Oh, is this CNN? I got some news for you. Let me, let me give you some news. CNN? Hit it. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, Wait, CNN. I validate let me just parking ticket. It's but, so embarrassing. I mean, hey, it's like a buck fifty. Come on. The man owns it, you know. But a lot of people don't know this, and this will be some news for you. Merv is my dad. Uh, this is my father right here, and I just want right. to say, Dad, I love you. I can't believe I found you again. And uh, I can't You're believe beautiful. I, and, and thank I you have, for the validation. You, you are in my will, and I've left you everything. The hotel? No, the deck. Oh, <laughs> now I'm moving. <laughs> I was there when Debbie won. Yeah, so it's nice to see her again. It's yes. Nice Bella Shaw. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. And Bella does uh, showbiz. Showbiz for CNN, and, and you didn't have a chance probably to see it. I saw it's like very the difficult. last 10 minutes or something. It's, the, it's very difficult what they did because they had to sort of, I call it flying by the seat of your pants. No script. Yes, it can be And it's who's been nominated before and for what. I had a better time at the Oscars than I do. Is that right? It's easy. Music, I, I'm not familiar with some of the heavy metal No, stuff. I'm not either. Uh, and I'm more familiar now with country and western. A lot of the groups that I don't know. I don't know the rap, you know. <laughs> uh, but it was interesting. I was so glad that Bonnie Ray won. Because I've been there. For instance, I didn't know a lot of the groups like Willie Vanilli. Vanilli Vanilli. The uh, Macy's Fritz tells you just how disconnected I am from normal life. And I was in one of the, the um, motorhomes waiting to go out on my float. And I was sitting there with a group of boys in there. And they had their little cellular yeah. phones. There was all these girl, 14-year-old groupies outside going yeah. crazy. Finally, I asked, why are these girls out there? Yeah. Why are these boys in here? And so I was always in the I don't feel like that. I didn't say it. Oh, that's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah, so bad. I mean, my daughter gives me the this, you know. Also, have you noticed that you can't understand the words after you get over 21? <laughs> I can't understand the words. You have to learn language. Yes. Debbie, you're halfway through your reign. September is coming up pretty quickly. Has it gone by pretty fast? Was there anything, you know, like in your mind when you glamorized being Miss America, any surprises that you've seen? Well, there have been some things that I didn't anticipate. However, I was in the Miss America pageant system for seven years. It took me seven years, 11 tries in two different states to win the Miss Missouri title and go on to Miss America. So I had a very realistic idea of what it was like. I knew that it was very little glamour and quite a bit of hard work and travel. And it has been that. Um, but it has been more enjoyable than I thought that it could be. The, meeting the people and the travels has been extraordinary. Also, this year, uh, something brand new for the pageant. They allowed the new Miss America to have a platform. and. Uh, of her choice, and I chose this year, motivating youth to excellence. So as I travel and get to do some of the more um, glitzy or paparazzi things of being Miss America, I also get to go into area schools and youth organizations. As a matter of fact, I'll be visiting some schools here in LA when I come back next week, and I talk about the value of goal setting and working hard and overcoming limitations to achieve all of our dreams and aspirations. You've been busy for the next couple of years, just getting yeah. caught up in all oh the duties goodness. that you had as Miss America. Put, putting together my scrapbook from the year will take an, another five years to do that. That. Now, like had you man. been to L.A. before, Debbie? Uh, yes, I had. Actually, I've been. I've uh, come before I was Miss America and since. I was here in October. I had the opportunity to have a reception uh, with the mayor and uh, met some of the city officials. And also, I was back for the taping of the uh, NAACP Image Awards and had the opportunity to do some public service announcements while I was out for uh, the Lou Rawls Parade of Stars and a couple of other charitable organizations. Has this whetted your appetite for perhaps going into some kind of entertainment? You know, I know you love veteran, veterinary medicine, but, you know, like uh, acting or singing? Well, this is a fascinating world and I think I am I am uh, uh, awed by it as any other average American but I really Miss America the pageant itself was a means to an end for me and that end is veterinary medicine I will take advantage of all the opportunities that I can that come along with you this year along with pursuing my career so you know I, I can't say no don't, I, you'll never see me on TV because maybe I will uh, be able to but you'll definitely see me uh, being an, uh, an academician, I'd like to teach veterinary medicine and also work with young people for the rest of my life. And Marianne, you were just saying how things are different now, you know, from 
way Debbie describes her jet set life in Miss America. But when you think that I won 30 years ago, and back then there were no jets, there were no electric hair curlers, and there were no electric hair dryers, and I remember sleeping on curlers. You know, anything though to look halfway decent the next morning. And uh, I would, uh, I was thinking about how fortunate uh, all of the new Miss Americas are, but yet each year presents its own challenges. And Debbie has been a wonderful example. She's been a wonderful role model for the next Miss America to, to try to reach. She has handled herself with great dignity, and she's uh, been an intelligent and lovely representative of, of every young American young lady, and that's what we hope for at the Miss America pageant. But we've been very fortunate to have her as Miss America, and she's really has done a sensational job. You know, a lot of people don't understand that the Miss America pageant is the world's largest scholarship program for women, and that it is not owned by a promoter. No one gets money from the broadcasting of the Miss America pageant. Any profit that comes in goes back into the scholarship program. So I'm very proud of the Miss America pageant because we are we're turning out young ladies like Debbie, and it's something that I'm, I'm very proud of. And how nice of you to come and be with us today. I was very proud of you on the Grammys. I mean, I love your show, and that's not an easy thing to do, to sit there and to watch everyone come in, and then it's live. I don't think people understand. It, it uh, separates the men from the boys, as we say, when you're having to be on television live and not knowing what's going to happen next. But you did a great job. I'm going to save this tape, of course, uh, when contract <laughs> negotiation comes up as proof of the tremendous job I'm doing on Showbiz. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. It's good to see nice you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. I'm sure the next six months will go by even faster. You know? Oh, yes. In many ways, it, it has zipped by. I can't believe my year is half over. But when I think about all the things I've done and all the places I've been, all the it seems like a lifetime. Oh, yes. All the hands are shook. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this thing. I had a little girl start crying. Oh. I was in the Macy's parade. And uh, I, I met a little girl a couple of days later, and she came and she goes, Hi, do you remember me? And I said, No, sweetie, I'm sorry. You know, where did I meet you before? And she got these big crocodile tears in her. She goes, You waved at me in the parade. And I was like, Oh, well, it's so good to see you again. But I was just devastated because I do meet so many people. And she was devastated that I didn't remember her. So. No, but it, people don't realize it's very, it's very hard. Because if you are a performer and you're doing 365 one-nighters, at least you have the day to yourself. And if you want to run around in your baseball cap and your Levi's, you can't. Debbie can't do that. She doesn't have the luxury of letting down her hair and going around in Levi's and a, and a baseball cap because everyone is looking at her. And I think that sometimes people don't realize how with all of its uh, great joys and perks and the advantages that you have, it's very difficult to always try to, well, it's not difficult for her because look how beautiful and young she is. But I remember thinking, uh, you know, one day I would like to get up and not put on my makeup and not curl my hair and just go out and be a normal person. But you have to think of it that I have this exceptional opportunity for one year and I've got to make the best of it. And then I'll have a lot of time after this year is over to sort of fall apart. But it is. It's a very difficult year. It's a very rewarding year. And uh, every time she gets up, she's got to put on the smile, whether she feels like it or not. And she has to take time with everybody. And uh, she's done just that, so I'm very proud of her. That's great. Okay, Bill. And you're a rock star, and you're on the road. You have the days to yourself, and you can do that. Oh, yeah. I try to always look decent. It's something that I sort of like in the, uh, the transition of the Miss America pageant. Uh, today's woman is, is more natural. She's more relaxed. The, the, I'm not the ideal woman.